The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. What is a habit? A habit is something that we do without even thinking about it. A habit is something that is formed through repetition. You have repetitiously done something enough that it has just become part of you and you do it without even really paying any attention to the fact that you do it. However, if you don't do it, you miss it. I brush my teeth probably a minimum of four times a day. I don't think about it. I don't even really make a plan to brush my teeth. I don't have to leave myself notes to say brush your teeth. But if I don't brush my teeth, my mouth just doesn't feel right. It has become a habit in my life. And we all have good habits, and we all have some bad habits, some things that we would really like to see changed in our life. I read that 40%, as much as 40% of everything that we do is done strictly out of habit. Now that's pretty amazing to think that 40% of everything that we do, we're just reacting. You know, you, you can have a habit of reacting to certain situations in certain ways. How many of you know somebody that you already know how they're gonna react in a certain situation? As soon as that situation comes up, you know what, you know what they're gonna do. You know why they do that? Because they have a habit of doing that. There's all kinds of habits. There's emotional habits, there's mental habits, there's physical habits, there's spiritual habits, social habits, financial habits. And so we wanna talk about this whole area of habits because the truth is, if you can make a habit through repetition, then you can break a habit through repetition. You didn't do something right once to get a good habit, you didn't do something wrong once to get a bad habit. But if you did something enough times to get a bad habit, then if you do it right enough times, it will break that habit. Now they say, whoever they are, I never have figured out who they are yet, but we give them a lot of credit for everything. I don't know if you know it or not, but they pretty much run the world. They tell us how to dress. They tell us what the hairstyles are. They tell us, they tell us everything. I don't know who they are, but I think I finally figured out that we are they. And, uh, but different experts, and I'm not sure that any of us are experts, but it seems to have more weight if you say an expert said. So I'm gonna say tonight that I heard one expert say in 21 days, you can make or break a habit. I've heard another one say 30 days. I see that work in my life in many instances. Sometimes it takes longer than that. But the point is, is you gotta start somewhere. And I say, there's no time like the present. No, how many of you have been putting something off long enough and it's now time to confront it and get on the other side of it? Come on, anybody? You've been putting up with it long enough. Can I tell you something? Bad habits are your enemy. Well, no, they're not, they're just a bad habit. No, they're keeping you from being the best person that you can be. And you're probably never gonna get over them until you treat them like an enemy and act like they're a thief stealing the best life that Jesus has already purchased for you through the sacrifice of his blood, amen? We all want good habits. There's not one person in here that wouldn't say, oh yes, Joyce, I want good habits. But not everybody is willing to work. Work, 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 work. Not everybody's willing to work toward having them. We all would love to just have good habits downloaded on us, just like you can download new software into your computer. But you can't download a victory. <laughs> you can't download a new habit. I think I said on TV this week that you can drive through and get everything drive through, but you can't get a drive through breakthrough. <laughs> I don't watch my own program much, but I did watch it one day this week. And I remember that I said that, see, so. Good habits have the power to defeat bad habits. And I wanna stress this thing about focusing on the good thing you want to do 
and stop focusing on the bad thing that you don't want to do. And I know that's a huge problem. We think about the bad thing we're doing as if it's keeping us from doing the good thing we want to do. So we think if we can defeat the bad thing, then maybe we can be good. But the truth of the matter is, is you overcome evil with good. You overcome evil with good has the power to overcome evil. A good habit has the power to drive the bad habit out of your life. Let me just give you one example. You can focus on I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight. I need to be on a diet, a diet, a diet. Yes, a diet, a diet, a diet. <laughs> you can focus on that and focus on that. And somebody may disagree with me, but I think when you have a diet mentality, all it does is make you want to eat. <laughs> you just have food on your mind all the time, and you're hungry all the time. So I'm not going to tell you to think about going on a diet. I'm going to tell you to focus on eating healthy. Think about the foods that are good for you. Think about the foods that would more or less be ones that God had created. Think about them and decide you're going to be healthy. Don't focus on being on a diet. Think about being healthy. Make good choices. And by doing that, you will be breaking the habit that you have that is causing you to think you need to be on a diet. How many of you have been on enough diets in your life to have lost a thousand pounds? <laughs> How, who's here that's lost at least 200 pounds and gained it all back throughout your life? Not at one time, but I mean over, you know. Well, I think I might be there, you know. And a long time ago, I had to get over this diet mentality because what I did was I just constantly had my mind on food. So now I just eat healthy. I've learned a lot about health and a lot about nutrition and make a lot of good choices. Not every choice is good. Sometimes I allow myself something on purpose just so I've got a little wiggle room in my life. But I don't wiggle so much that I can't wiggle into my pants. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Galatians 5:16. But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Now, what does it mean to be guided by the Spirit? Well, I'll give you one hint. Anytime you say, I know I shouldn't do this, but I know I should clean the house today, but I know I should get this garage cleaned up, but I know I need to pay my bills today because if I don't, they're going to be late, but I know I should exercise, but <laughs> we're just trying to help you get rid of your butt. <laughs> And I mean that in the right way. <laughs> you don't have to take everything I say that way. I, I was totally pure-hearted when I said that. <laughs> well, maybe not totally, but <laughs> I cannot tell a lie. So what happens is when we know we shouldn't do something or we know we should do something, that's the Holy Spirit prompting us to do the right thing. Don't tell me you don't know how to hear from God. You hear from God all the time, but he doesn't speak to you through the ears on your head most of the time. He prompts you, just little promptings. Just little, you know, they have a clock right here, a big one, that's supposed to prompt me to quit preaching after one hour. And I do it now, but years ago, when I first started doing this, they had cassette tapes and they were, they were 60 minutes long or like maybe 70 minutes, 75, something like that. And if you went over that, then people didn't get the rest of the message. So I was forever selling people teachings that they didn't have any end on. Because I did not obey the promptings of the clock. Back then we didn't have a clock. They held up signs for me. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five, four, three, two, one. And then I'd just like hang it all and I'd just keep preaching. Until I started getting enough complaints. I've listened to this whole teaching. I'm so frustrated because I, now I don't know how it ends. I don't know the answer. So me, now here you're going to get something. Me not following the promptings of the Holy Spirit 
was giving other people problems. I was doing what I wanted to do. But it was keeping even our ministry from presenting the best to people because I wasn't finishing what I started. So always remember that if you don't follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, you're not only cheating your help yourself, but you're gonna cheat somebody else. I wanna go over these two scriptures again, Romans 12, 21. Well, we'll do this one since they have it up there. <laughs> but I say walk and live habitually. How many of you see habitually? That means that you can form a habit of walking in the Spirit. <laughs> If, if you have a habit of overriding the Holy Spirit and just doing what you want to anyway, then it's a habit. And we may think we get by with it, but really we don't. Not really. Because there's something that God's trying to lead us into or out of that's gonna be better for us than what we have. But if we ignore him, then we're never gonna have it. That doesn't mean God won't love us. It doesn't even necessarily mean, it doesn't mean we're not gonna go to, to heaven. We're not saved because of our great choices all the time, we're saved by what he did for us on the cross. But we need to learn to habitually follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And it is so much fun to be a Christian when you learn to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit for you as an individual. It becomes so much fun because you never know on any day when you give, get up what God's gonna come up with. I mean, you just never know. You know when God laughs? When we make a plan. <laughs> to God, that is hysterical. There they go, they got their plan for the day again. Watch this. <laughs> Amen. And then Romans 12, 21, one of my very favorite scriptures. We overcome, do not let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome and master evil with good. Now let's just take a little liberty here and say this a different way. Do not let yourself be overcome by bad habits, but overcome and master bad habits with good habits. Does everybody here tonight want to have better habits? Does anybody here have some bad habits? that you wanna get rid of. All right, we're on our way. Now, Hebrews 12, two, one more scripture that kind of proves what I'm talking about here, says, looking away from all that will distract unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Okay, so that's all we're gonna read. So we're gonna, we're gonna start out in faith here, asking God to birth a new thing in our life by helping us make better habits. And now the scripture is telling us, looking away from the bad thing that would distract you and look at Jesus, who is not only the author, but the finisher of your faith. So I really believe that there may be, you know, you might feel like I've got 50 bad habits. Well, you might only have to develop five or six really good ones. And it might drive all 50 of those bad ones out of your life. Like I said tonight, I'm going to tell you the one main habit. What is it? I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> it's not time to do that. The more we focus on what's wrong, the more we produce what's wrong. Yes. Very true. What you focus on becomes bigger to you than anything else in your life. Good. Never say you don't have any self-control and never say you hate discipline. Now I'm telling you from the get-go, if you're gonna start trying to make good habits and break some bad habits, never say, never say, I hate discipline. And never say, I don't